Life and Faith, the two are intimately connected. For more than two decades, Life and Faith Television has painted pictures and told stories of faith journeys here in Southwestern Ontario. Join us now as we continue the tradition. We explore the diversity in our lives of faith and the faith of our lives. Good morning. It's good to see you again. If you're new to Life and Faith, well, a very special welcome. This morning, Life and Faith speaks with the Right Reverend Bob Bennett, a bishop serving the Diocese of Huron, to find out what his journey in this role has been like. Then Reverend Gary Clark, the President of the London Conference of the United Church of Canada, joins Matthew Penny for a discussion on his role and vision. Lastly, Dan Smoke introduces us to First Nation visual artist and musician Leland Bell. We open our show this morning with Reverend Keith Nethery, who sits down with Bishop Bob Bennett to talk about his 10 years as a suffragan bishop and then bishop in the Diocese of Huron. Let's listen to their conversation. This morning on Life and Faith, it's good to have the right Reverend Robert Bennett, the Bishop of uh, Huron with us. And Bishop Bennett, 10 years that you've been in Episcopal leadership, four years as the, uh, as the, the Bishop of Huron. Tell us about the journey. Uh, it's been an interesting journey to say the least, Keith. Uh, for, its, uh, for the first six years, I was um, suffering a bishop to Bishop Howe, and, and so there's a good learning curve to learn um, the kinds of things that are expected of a bishop. Um, but uh, uh, bishop Howe was actually the bishop of Huron. I was his assistant, and, and so uh, um, it was a, had six years kind of to learn, to observe, and, uh, and to uh, sort of get comfortable in the role of being uh, a bishop as compared to a parish priest, which I, uh, I exercised ministry, most of my ministry as a parish priest. The last three years plus, I'm into actually year four, um, as Dawson are very interesting because now um, those things that I perhaps didn't notice that Bishop Howe had to take on his shoulders, I now uh, have on my shoulders. And, and a lot of things come to my desk that never came to my desk as a suffragan. And, and, uh, but uh, I, I, um, I feel God is calling me to this. I, I feel good uh, about uh, what we're doing as church. It's, it's, very, very, it's a very, very challenging time to be church. But I also find that right in the middle of that challenge, very, it's very exciting uh, because of trying to discern what God has in mind for us. One of the things I notice is uh, we'll often hear you talk about where we're having a meeting with Toronto, a meeting with Niagara. There seems to be a growing sense of cooperation um, across the country amongst bishops, but especially in, in, in southern Ontario. Uh, is that uh, help uh, as you journey together with your, your fellow bishops close by? Uh, very much so. Uh, it, when uh, everyone it just, it knows as if you live in the church land, if you live in church land, that, that the, the uh, the sands are shifting, that the church is changing. It's not the church that uh, I was born into, grew up in the 50s. It's not the church uh, that I was ordained into in the 70s. It just keeps changing, and the rate of change keeps uh, accelerating. And it's very helpful to have conversations with, uh, with other bishops and other uh, executives across uh, in other dioceses, because what we think, you, you tend to think that the stresses and strains um, that you're experiencing might be unique to here, and they're not. They're across the church. They're across North America. Uh, there, there's, there's something more than just the isolated unit. It's something's happening to us. And so we have been meeting with, for example, the Diocese of Niagara, our senior team, uh, has been meeting with theirs and really finding it very helpful. And we're beginning to explore ways that uh, the two dioceses can share uh, resources and uh, share events together and kind of to try to deal with these great changes that are upon us. One of the things that uh, is, uh, I'm sure, taking up a, a fair bit of your time is, uh, is the strategic plan and the implementation of um, Archdeacon Richard Salt, Director for Mission and Ministry. Uh, talk about that strategic plan, that uh, new relationship and work and ministry with Richard, and how that all wraps uh, together with you and, and, and Bishop Terry as well. We are so appreciative of having um, Richard Archdeacon Salt in this ministry. Um, as one goes around as a bishop, uh, there's only so many hours in the day, only so many things that we can deal with. Uh, the demands in our time are great. This, the strategic plan is really our mission plan. It's really a vision uh, for us of, we know we can't stay where, where we are. We know we have to move ahead into what one, if you use the, a, a theological or biblical term, uh, the, the wilderness 
of the unknown. The, I call it the vortex of the, <laughs> of the unknown. It really is some days. Um, but we have this wonderful strategic plan, and, and, and we've been able to say, well, look, we need to, to spend energy here, here, here. And, and, uh, and Richard has been charged uh, in his ministry uh, to implement that plan, and not, not him, but to facilitate the implementation of that plan. He's doing a great job, I have to tell you, to my mind. And, and uh, so he has uh, uh, parishes in all corners of the diocese in, in engaging in serious conversations about are there things that we can do together? Are we being called uh, to a new way of being church? Is there something that can be birthed uh, yeah, that God is saying to us as we leave the church of the 50s, the church of the 60s, the church of the 70s, and even the 80s and 90s? And, and, um, and Richard is really the, the trigger for that implementation. Another spoke in that wheel is the, the ministry uh, begun by Bishop Ed Lydell when he was here with the congregational coaches and then Archdeacon John Callahan took it on and now Archdeacon Perry Chipka who has a, a, a new combination parish, the new beginning, so uh, kind of on the cutting edge. Talk a little bit about, uh, about Perry's new ministry. Well, let me back up and, and say that we are, so, we are so blessed to have the ministry of, of Bishop Lydell from Eastern Michigan uh, sort of get us moving in a, direction, a different direction in terms of congregational coaching. And uh, sometimes congregations uh, know that they're under stress, they don't know what to do. They don't know that there are tools and resources to help them move through that uh, transitional period in their life. And again, to have the archdeacons or the bishops cannot be involved to the level uh, that they would like, uh, it's just not possible. So Ed, the gift, one of the gifts that Ed gave us was to establish this team and to train congregational coaches who are a uh, an incredible group of folks who are willing to go into parishes who are saying we need some help. We need to, to do some visioning here and we need to do some planning about what, the, what, what does the future hold in store for us. And uh, when Ed left, um, uh, I appointed Archdeacon Callahan and Canon Marilyn Malton, a, lay, a wonderful layperson in our diocese, to uh, co-facilitate this team of coaches. We have them across the diocese and they're sitting ready and able to move in uh, with all kinds of resources to help congregations as soon as they've identified where the stress points are, where they need that help. And now Archdeacon uh, Chipka is taking over and uh, with Marilyn and providing this resource and he's got some really great plans. He wants to, you know, in the, what he calls the toolkit, the resource toolkit to help congregations move through these times. And we'll uh, have an interview with uh, Archdeacon Chipka on life and faith in the near future. Uh, something uh, relatively new for you, uh, a grandfather times two. I remember last year at the clergy conference uh, as you were on baby watch with the cell phone in your pocket. Talk about uh, that new role in, in life to be, to, uh, be a grandpa. Uh, it, uh, Keith is one of the great blessings of life. You know, you know a father um, and I have two wonderful daughters and uh, uh, and when, as anyone who is a parent knows how intense it is to, to walk with your children as they develop and uh, move out into life, but you get to the stage where uh, you are gifted with granddaughters, um, in my case, granddaughters, um, and they, they, they are such a blessing, it's almost, you almost can't describe how, how, how uh, uh, what it means to you and Kathy. My wife Kathy, uh, every once in a while, gets an itch. She says, I need to go to Windsor and see my granddaughters. Actually, she said that yesterday, so, <laughs> so we have to re rejig the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, our, our planner so that we can get down there because uh, it just reminds you, Keith, of how uh, life carries on. You know, it goes from one generation to a generation. I remember reading one time where I was told that uh, babies are God's way of saying life is good and life will carry on. Life is good uh, is something that Bishop Howe used to say all the time, and yeah. we'll make that uh, segue into the uh, the second decade, I guess, if that uh, we can describe it that way, the second decade of the Episcopate of uh, of Bob Bennett. Uh, what do you see ahead in the next years? Well, I see you know the, the, I see the rate of change for the church, uh, which actually is subsumed within society itself. For societal change is is going to increase. I really believe that, it, and and uh, so that. Society will be unrecognizable in five or ten years. And of course, the church exists within in the society and the culture where we find ourselves. And the rate of change, I believe, is going to uh, uh, is also going to intensify. But I also believe that God, the Holy Spirit, is with us, and that uh, we are a family, and we're, we're we need to be honest and open about what God is saying to the church. It's going to be a very different place in five or ten years. We all know that. But I find that very exciting. I think it's new opportunities for God to speak to us about how God's mission will be exercised in God's world. 
wise words from the Right Reverend Bob Bennett, the Bishop of Huron, who has guested with us on Life and Faith this morning. Our thanks to uh, Bishop Bob for Life and Faith. This is Reverend Keith Nethery.